Welcome to our lesson about adding a fade to your event. A fade gives the effect that an event is fading in, getting louder in volume, or fading out, which means getting quieter in volume. Often this is done with volume automation, which we'll learn about later in this section of the course. Adding a fade in or out to an event gives a more natural and pleasant sound, for example, let's say to a string's intro or exit. Adding a fade using an event's handles is very easy. First, activate the Object Selection tool. Now select the event that you want to apply the fade to. When the event is selected, you'll see some white squares at the bottom of the event, and you'll see some blue triangles in the top corners. These blue triangles are called the fade handles, and this is where you apply the fade. When you hover over the fade handle, the cursor changes to a double-sided arrow. Press down the mouse button and drag it in, and that's how you create the fade. This is the fade area. A fade at the beginning of an event is a fade in, and at the end, it's called a fade out. The event's waveform reflects the fade, giving you a rough guide and visual feedback about what you've done. Let's have a listen. And now let's listen without the fade. And you saw me tweaking it there because I had too much fade. I needed just a little bit so it sounded natural and pleasant. As you saw, you make the fade shorter or longer at any time by dragging the handle to the left or right. You can also select multiple events and drag the fade handles on one of them to apply the fade to all events, and it'll be the same fade. If you use a lot of fades in your work, it can get processor intensive since they play back in real time, so keep that in mind. There are some options regarding the appearance of the fades. We can go to the File menu, scroll down to Preferences, Event Display, and select Audio. Fade Handles always on top. This keeps the fade handles at the top of the event, as you saw in my event, with vertical help lines showing you where the fade starts. This helps you see the fade handles even when the volume is very low. Let's close the Preferences window. Here's the vertical help line I was talking about. As an alternative to dragging fade handles, you can also use the fade commands under the audio menu. Cross fade, remove fades, open fade editor, adjust fades to range, fade in and out to cursor. Let's try it out. First thing to do is select the place where we want the fade to end. First, let's trim the event a little bit. Now let's zoom in and have a listen, so we'll know where to position the cursor. Stop playback and let's solo the strings track. Stop playback and position our cursor about here. Now let's go to Audio and select Fade In to Cursor. And our fade is created. Let's scroll over to the end of this event and create a fade out. Let's just zoom out a bit. We'll create a fade out in the same way, just trim the track. Have a listen to the end soloed. Okay, and let's position the cursor at an approximate spot where the fade out should begin. Now let's go to the audio menu. And let's select fade out to cursor. And our fade out is created. We can also use the range selection tool to create and adjust fades. Let's apply a fade to the vocal track now. We'll need to unmute the voice track. Let's position our cursor for playback at the place, approximate place, where we'd like the fade to be. Baby, and 
stop playback. Zoom in a little bit. Now left click and drag over a section of the audio. Release the mouse button to confirm your selection. This is how we create a fade in of a range. From the beginning of the event to the end of the range that you want to fade into. If I select a range that includes the end of the event, then the range represents a fade out. If my selection is in the middle of an event, then everything up to my selection will fade in and everything after will fade out. Let's go to the audio menu. Adjust fades to range. And here's our new fade in. You're able to apply a fade this way across multiple tracks and events to all audio events in any range. If you want to remove fades, you select the event with the fade and then go to the audio menu and select Remove Fades. You can also use the Range Selection tool to remove fades. And of course, you can simply just restore the original position of the fade handles by dragging with the Object Selection tool. Let's zoom to full. And let's go to the Audio menu, select Process. There are two commands available here, Fade In and Fade Out. And you might be wondering how these Fade In and Out commands are different than the commands that we've just looked at. When we create a fade via the Process submenu, we actually modify the audio clip. Cubase keeps backups of the original, so you can easily restore your original file if you need to. This is called a process fade, and using a process fade is a good thing to do if all instances of this file in your work need the fade. This conserves some computer processing power. If you need to remove or modify the fades, you use the offline process history dialog window. This shows us the processing that's been applied to the selected audio event, and from here we remove, modify, or bypass processes. In order to apply a fade via processing, you can select a range of a single event or multiple events. After you make your selection, go to Audio, Process, and choose the fade type. We can use the Range tool, or we can use the Object Selection tool to select single or multiple events. Now let's go to Audio, Process, and let's choose Fade In. The Fade Parameters dialog window opens. You modify the curve type, etc. here, and when you're ready, you either preview or accept the fade. We've selected events that refer to the same audio clips should we skip doubles or create new versions of the selections. Skipping the doubles will create fewer new files with the processed fade. Let's create new versions. And let's take a look at the offline process history. Here's our new fade, and from this dialog window, we can do a number of things. We can remove the fade, first of all. We're also able to modify it, replace it, as well as deactivate it. Let's close the offline process history dialog window and return to our project. Now let me zoom in a little bit to the beginning of this event. Notice that we don't see the fade that we saw previously. That's because the processing was applied at the file level, not in the project file played back in real time. To create a different kind of fade using some Cubase presets, just double click on the fade area and this opens the fade parameters dialog window that we got to when we applied a fade via processing. There's a number of different fade shapes or algorithms to choose from. Up at the top, we have three options for curve kind. These options determine whether the fade curve will consist of spline segments, and this is the most smooth fade curve, but more processor intensive. However, for the purposes of small projects, the processor usage won't be relevant. Damped spline is less smooth, linear segments are the least smooth, and these will also be smaller files. Down below, we can choose from a number of different fade curves. Each selection will be updated real time in the fade display area above. We can click and drag any of the points to adjust them. 
To get rid of a point, we just drag it right out of the fade display area. Press the Restore button here to cancel any changes you've made since opening this dialog window. This button's available when you edit a fade that you've made using the fade handles. It'll restore the fade curve that was there by default when you open this window. Fade length value here. Here we enter a length for the fade based on the units in your primary time display. In my case, I see hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. As default, we'll create a new default fade that is automatically applied to all new fades. Any length value we establish above will be stored here too. Click Store to save the fade parameters you've set up here as a preset. Just type in the name, let's say Smooth Vocal, and press OK or Enter. Then the preset's available for selection if you need it. And of course, you can delete it the same way, just select it and click Remove. Click OK if you want to apply the fade and close the dialog window. To leave the dialog window open after you've applied the fade, you could just click Apply. We're going to click OK, return to our project, restore the project window, and this concludes our first lesson about creating fades.